Hello, welcome back to the boat shop. Today is the 7th of August of 2024. And we're going to do this video pretty much the same as I've been doing. We're going to go back and show a few clips that we, we did during the, during the week. And then I'll end things up with a little recap of, of, of what was done the, the entire week. So, today is Friday, kind of a midweek update here. And I wanted to share something with you. That was uh, sort of a major disappointment. Uh, this was a section I did, uh, two, three and a half foot sections <clears throat> here on the on this joint, on this keel to hull joint. And I guess it was these two right in here. Um, I had put the 1708 on. And then I put uh, a layer of 8 ounce or 6 ounce 8 inch wide tape on. And then the peel ply. And the next day I came out to peel off the peel ply. And look what happened. The peel ply stuck to the this, this 8 inch tape. But this 8 inch tape peeled right off the side of the boat. Um, and this was some tape that I'd ordered from Amazon that was supposed to have the, the finished edges. You know, I talked about how nice the finished edges would be so you don't have all this frilly stuff on the edge. And as you can see, it was not even close to being that. Um, this edge wasn't horrible, but, but this edge here was totally unraveled and, and just a mess. And when I bought, when I opened up this package and looked at it, which this is the stuff right here. It looked a little different than regular e-glass. It, it felt a little bit different than regular e-glass. And, of course, the edges being not finished kind of ticked me off a little bit, but I didn't expect to have a problem like this. Um, the peel ply actually stuck better than the, than the fiberglass tape did. And this was fully wetted out. Um, turns out, and I looked at the listing then on Amazon, and it turns out... They called this fiberglass polyester tape. So my guess is, is this is all polyester, um, which is what the peel ply is, and it's supposed to peel off. <laughs> you know, leave the epoxy behind, and, and the polyester peels off. That's exactly what happened here. So not only a waste of money, but a waste of my time. And then I had to go back, and once it was cured fully, well, it was pretty much cured fully when I peeled it off, but I had to go back then and sand it and, and, and put a new layer of uh, of uh, the 10, I used the 10 ounce again, my regular e-glass here. But uh, yeah, this is, I left a review and, and I left a video review on Amazon and I think it's the first negative review I've ever left on Amazon. But what a worthless piece of junk this is. Absolutely worthless. Uh, epoxy doesn't stick to it. <laughs> You know, it had pretty good reviews. It had a lot of reviews, and it was four and a half stars. Um, yeah, a few people complained about this, the edges not being sealed. And they kept making a big point of that in the description, that it was the edges were all finished. Well, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they changed, you know, got this from a different supplier or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, it's garbage. So, uh, lesson learned. Um I just need to order stuff from my normal suppliers. This is a, a six inch roll uh, that, I, that I got from my normal supplier. And you can see the edges are nice and, and, and finished on this, which is gonna make it much easier to use. So yeah, don't order this crap from China off of the Amazon. Um, and this really isn't any more expensive. I just thought I could get that stuff faster and, and use it. And that's why I ordered it off at Amazon. I don't normally do that. But anyway, so yeah, in the future, any of this tape I'm going to order, it's going to come from from my normal supplier, which is, is U.S. Composites. That's the company I get uh, everything from. Uh, I get my epoxy from them, but get, getting some tape from them. I get my rolls of glass cloth, my 1708. And I also get my uh, uh, Cabasil, Aerosil, Silica. From them now i originally got this five gallon pail and i discovered that wasn't going to last me too long so i've been ordering it in these big bags now it's only a 10 pound bag <laughs> but, but uh, there's a lot there and that you know that's i think 
the second bag. I ordered a five, that five gallon pail, and this is my second uh, 10 pound bag now of, of aerosol. And uh, it's way cheaper. These people that buy it in these little tins, I can't imagine how expensive that must be. Way, 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 way cheaper buying it, buying it in quantity. If you're building a boat, buy it in quantity because you'll need it. Anyway, so I've been progressing along here and I decided that maybe I should get uh, some of this work done up here. And uh, as you can see here, I got my first, uh, not first, but I got the, the fiberglass cloth on this section here. So I got this sanded and then I filled all the screw holes um, and then I got this layer of a fiberglass cloth on here uh, because these pieces were not pre pre glassed. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it was a little troublesome getting it up on there. Um, the stuff that needs to go up here, I think, is going to be a little easier because it's just a little more vertical here. This has still got a, a fair amount of uh, undercut to it, so it was a little bit challenging to get it in there. I used my my old technique of, of putting push pins in and I originally had push pins put in along up here and then I put some tape up there to, to hold it up to the to the rest of the other parts of the boat and and, uh, and then pulled those pins out now these edges don't matter because this is all going to get uh, ground down plain down and uh, and then it'll get these edges will all get taped all the seams will get taped this seam here will get will get taped as well well maybe it wouldn't need it now should have gone a little farther out with it and i wouldn't have had to bother taping that seam but but i'll probably tape it anyway we'll see see how it looks um but yeah i got this on and it was hot again today 90 degrees or thereabouts and i was worried about my epoxy going off and trying to get this stuff stuck up under there and i finally did but it was a little bit too big a piece I, you know this was just a little bit too much to do on on a kind of an overhead type environment like that. I probably should have cut it into two pieces, but I did get it on there and it stuck on there and it laid out uh, all right. So yeah, so that's all good to go. Just another real quick midweek update. Um, yesterday I got the fiberglass on here. I got this these panels here. I got the screw holes filled and uh, I got the fiberglass on here. And it wasn't easy. It was a little too big a piece to, to get stuck up there properly. I managed to do it. I put some, some push pins in there and, and uh, in the corners and managed to get it on there, but it wasn't easy to do. So, yeah, even on that mi fairly mild angle, it was tough to do. So, yeah, definitely the bottom of the boat would be a pain to try to, to put all the fiberglass on it once it's there. Now here, I've got this sanded. Well, I used... Uh, cuts all disc which is a kind of like a, a rasp on a on a grinder uh, on an angle grinder and i got this more or less down to uh, the profile that i wanted and then i hit it with a flap disc and then i hit it with a five inch random orbital and then again all of the the edges inside edges and corners and whatnot i hit all of those with that uh, that rasp tool on my multi-tool that gives you a nice rough edge for the for the epoxy to, to, to bite into. Uh, it's probably the worst thing you can do is, is put epoxy on a smooth surface. So you want really as rough as possible. And that certainly is the case. And I used 40 grit sandpaper here. And, and like I said, that rasp is tremendously coarse. I'll get this cleaned up just a little bit better. And... Uh, and then I'll start getting epoxy on there in, in fiberglass. And I got a couple of pieces of 1708 cut out. I made a pattern out of uh, oh, some of this house wrap stuff, which is, you know, non-stretchy. You won't pull out of shape, um, but it's flexible enough to, to, to lay properly. So I made a couple of pieces, uh, 1708. We'll get one in there see what happens see if i think i can get two in there without them peeling back off again but uh i don't know how that's gonna go we'll we'll get at that tonight and hopefully we'll have at least the two layers on here tonight and then we'll see how many more we need i'm sure we'll need two or three more at least and then once we get this built up we'll have to 
fill in with thickened epoxy anywhere where we don't have you know a real nice edge and then everything will get covered in, in some some 10 ounce cloth then too to finish it off so yeah we'll get back at it okay another quick little midweek update here and uh ta-da <laughs> Yeah, we got this partially done anyway. We got the prop on the shaft, just lightly bolted on there. We got the bearing housing mounted. Um, the biggest part of this was getting this uh, perfectly perpendicular to the shaft in both directions. So I had to do a lot of grinding and, and sanding here, as you can see, to, to get this uh, back part here conformed to the... To the shaft but it is done and it seems to be to be all right we don't have any lube on the on the bearing here but it, it seems to you know i don't know turns reasonably well and i wound up having to use uh my cuts all disc which is this this jobby here and then my big sander and then of course used some various uh, squares and straight edges and whatnot to get this all all nice and flat and smooth but success that's not the most the biggest part about the deal though and here I'll show you what we got coming up here next okay now here we are inside the engine room and here's the most impressive part of this whole deal uh, the shaft comes in to this uh, thrust bearing housing and of course there's a uh, face here that it bolts into and then there's the coupler that bolts into that face of that thrust bearing. And I'll be doggone if it wasn't perfect. Now, it didn't happen by itself. I spent a lot of time with string levels and, and uh, laser levels and measuring and, and whatnot. But boy, I tell you what, um, we are fortunate. Um, it, it seems to be an absolute perfect fit absolutely perfect now we don't have the bearing housing inside here yet and that's probably going to be actually more difficult than the one out there depending on how how well that surface you know is compared to the compared to the shaft uh let me go over there and i'll show you sorry about the lack of light in here but i had a light here but we broke it but here you can see where the shaft comes through the, the shaft log or the or the keel and goes up to that bearing, uh, that thrust bearing up there. But here we are coming through here, and it looks pretty good now, providing the shaft is at right angles, you know, to the surface here. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll be in pretty good shape, but I suspect we might have to do some, some sanding in here too. And of course, it's a rather un uncomfortable place to get at. But, but anyway, so far as you can see, the 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 shaft is is sitting, you know, pretty much dead center in that. Yeah, feels like there's about an equal equal space <coughs> all the way around there. So we'll have to see how that goes. But th that's the next job, and and hopefully uh, tomorrow we can get to get the stuffing box on there. And then everything's got <coughs> oh, excuse me, everything's got to come out, and then we'll. Uh, uh, seal this all up with epoxy and whatnot, so get it mounted. Yeah, yeah. So we got that in today. That was a, a good, good, good job to get done and, and a good day. And we got uh, a few updates for the week. Um, you've seen that uh, the prop on there and then this uh, housing mounted. We got the one inside to do, and we're planning on doing that later today. Let's get the stuffing box mounted. I'm not sure where I left you last week. Probably didn't have all this done. Um, and I got most of this done, but I decided to stop here and uh, get this area up here done first. So I got this piece of glass on here, which wasn't easy, by the way. And now I'm putting the 1708 on here. And at the moment I've got four layers of 1708 on there. And I did another one last night. And we'll get this peel ply off of here, maybe. 
there. And I've got four layers on here now. And we'll probably do a couple more. And then we're gonna get this all smoothed out and a little bit of trimming here to do, but get it sanded and, and this smoothed out and, and we'll get it all fared. And yeah, this is gonna be really, really strong. I'm quite happy with the way this is, is working. And I'm also pleased with the way this 1708 is uh, sticking to the side of the boat. I was a little concerned about that. Whether that 1708 would stick to the side of the boat all right, being you know a little over vertical even. But it's, it's going on there and sticking on there just fine. It is amazing how much how much epoxy it takes. It's like 24 ounces to to wet out one layer of, of liquid epoxy to, to wet out one layer of this 1708 there. But yeah, so we're making progress here and uh, pretty soon we'll have this side completely done. Um, yesterday, little John was out helping again and he helped me uh, move plywood. We had a stack of plywood here and we moved that plywood up on top of the boat to get ready for working on the deck more. And then we can also get the rest of this stuff out of here then so we can start working on this this side down here and uh pull the scaffolding back here so we can get the rest of these uh and that's something i think john's going to do this afternoon get the rest of these screw holes i got started here but i always had plywood in in process back here so i really didn't want to be uh kicking sawdust down here so I didn't get a whole lot done other than just about two-thirds of this side here. But uh, yeah, he's going to work on this when he's got a little extra time. Get these uh, screws pulled out, get them countersunk, and then get the screws run back in again. And then like I said, uh, later today, this afternoon, we're planning on getting the stuffing box mounted inside the boat so yeah that would be good that would be very good to have that all done and hopefully we won't run into any any huge issues with that so we shall see but uh other than that i don't really have a whole lot else to report i've been doing a little cleaning up and getting trash out of here you can see i almost got a almost got a trailer load of miscellaneous trash but uh need to do a little more of that too but in shortly here we're going to have to come up with a way to work around these supports because um, these these are screwed in uh into what i do is i pull a hole or a, a screw out of one of these holes here and then i run a screw into this piece of wood here through that screw hole but pretty soon we're going to have these covered up so we're not going to be able to screw to the bottom of the boat or the side of the boat anymore so we're going to have to come up with a way to uh to hold the supports i suppose we could screw into the into the keel here and, and run a support up um, or you could do like you know regular boat stands and and run a chain under the keel or something to keep the the supports from from falling out but I don't know, it was just so much easier just screwing these in and then of course a couple screws goes in up here into that into that wood but I don't know I was hoping to try to come up with with some way of of attaching some supports to the to the cradle because of course when the boat is moved we're going to have to support the boat from the cradle to the boat somehow so yeah Maybe John and I will brainstorm that a little bit this afternoon, too. So we shall see. But anyway, um, that's where we stand uh, today. And it's the 7th of August. And uh, yeah, we're making progress. <laughs>